So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Christine Mills and I'm a public elected governor at Calderdale and Huddersfield NHS Foundation Trust, or CHFT as they tend to call us for short. I've been a governor since 2018 and I find the role very interesting and rewarding. How did I come to join the membership and how did I become a governor? Well, I joined the membership uh, as two 70-year-olds, my husband and I, we're trying to care for two 90-year-olds, our parents, one with dementia uh, and one with cancer. And we found, we both found, that there were days when various organisations would work together and assist us, and there were other days where the, everybody was miles apart. And it was so frustrating because we were elderly ourselves and our parents were, so we struggled through. And then when it was all over, I wanted, a, a, I suppose, a platform where I could go to someone and say, look, this works really well, but this didn't. And that's seen a leaflet for the membership. So I filled that in uh, and joined that way and then made my views known through that as a general view, not as a personal view. Uh, and then shortly after that, there were some vacancies came up. It was election time for governors. So I stood and I was fortunate enough to represent Huddersfield Central. Uh, I've just re-stood and I'm just about to start my second term. So a bit about me. Of course, as you've probably gathered, if I'm up well over 70, uh, I am retired. But previously, my working life was as a school administrator. And many, many, many moons ago, I worked in administration in the X-ray department at Huddersfield Royal Infirmary. As my children grew up, I described myself as a mum who came out of the kitchen. And I wanted to do more for the community. And at that particular time, I chose to apply and I was fortunate to become a magistrate a role which I undertook for 25 years. CHFT is a foundation trust, which means we are directly accountable to local people through our membership community. We currently have just over 5,500 public members who have signed up over the years since we became a foundation trust in 2006. Anyone can join the trust as a member as long as they are over 16 years of age. They just need to fill in the short, the, the short application form on our website. And our website address for that is www.cht.nhs.uk. And if anybody would like these repeating later on, I will, I'm more than willing to do that. So governors are elected each year from our membership. You have to be a membership of the foundation in order to stand as a governor. And there are two for each of our eight local constituency or areas as they're often referred to and one for the rest of England constituency making 17 public governors in total. The rest of England constituency is a new post that's only arisen over the last year and it's there for somebody who may have an interest in one hospital but doesn't live in that area but could offer something and they can stand in that role. We also have six staff governors elected from different staff groups and they are elected by their colleagues and then there are seven appointed governors and these are from our partner organisations such as the local councils Calderdale and Kirklees, the University of Huddersfield uh, and Health Watch which we are with today and Locala they all have a representative on, uh, on, on the board. If you want to see a full list of who the governors are, again, you can get that from our website. So the governors make up what is called the Council of Governors, and we're usually known as the COGs. And our main duty is to hold the non-executive directors to account. And in the same vein, the non-executive directors hold the executive directors to account for the performance of the trust. So it's a very interesting role. And in some ways, it's a very important role as well. Because we're not frightened of saying we don't agree with something uh, and oh, please will you listen to this view, would you consider this view. So as governors we also have a duty to seek the views of the members of public, the members of the foundation and the wider members of the public. That's very important that we try and reach them. And we try to talk, get information from them and give them information on changes being discussed at the Trust and also to feed back to them on the trust performance and forward plans. We want to develop a membership community that is active, engaged and representative of the local communities. We want to have a regular and meaningful two-way engagement between the trust staff, 
governors, members of, members of the public. And we also want to create a membership community that has a voice and a voice that is listened to and opportunities to get involved and contribute to the trust and the other services and also take note of our future plans and listen to the views of people about what they are going to be. So how are we hoping to do this? Well, we already have a number of different ways of involving and engaging with our members and members of the public. For example, we send out members newsletters three times a year and between each of these issues, we have oft, well, Vanessa and Danielle do this, they, they publish videos, they persuade one of the governors to do a little piece about what we actually do, because we all take a different part, being volunteers, we all take different parts. So we take it in turns to do a video about what we deal with and we can give information about that. And we invite governors and members of the trust to sit on interview panels for uh, senior members of staff. The role we take is how do we think that member of staff will communicate with a, a patient or a patient's carers or family. It's just to get a general feel of how this would happen. And they could be very interesting and offer quite an insight actually as to what happens. So there is a, an, e, a, an email address that you can contact us if you want to give us any information. It's a dedicated email address. And again, it is contactyourgovernor at cht.nhs.uk. But we are very much aware that we could do more. So first of all, we are now going to email all our members and ask them what and how they would like to hear from us whether they want to hear directly from the office or whether they'd like to hear probably more personally from a governor. And then we're going to set up a membership and engagement group to help with our engagement activities, which will include attending Health Watch events like this one, joining Health Watch at their events in the community, when of course it is possible and when of course it is safe to do so. We are also going to send out regular emails to members in our constituencies with updates on what's going on at the Trust, including any service changes that may be about to happen or may be planned, and we would like people's views on that, and introducing an area on our website where members and members of the public can submit questions for us to answer, or if not, we can find somebody who is the right person to answer that question. So these are just a few examples of what we're going to do, what we're hoping to do, and we really would welcome any feedback from you about what else you think we could do to engage better with our local community. So if you have any suggestions, we really, really would like to hear from you. So please email us at membership at cht.nhs.uk. And we really do want to hear from you. So please, if you have some ideas, don't be afraid of sending them in. And um, I was mindful when, when you were talking just about um, a couple of terms where I wondered whether people might be not quite sure what that meant. You talked about executive directors and non-executive directors. Um, and my understanding would be that an executive director is an employee of the trust, like a chief finance officer or chief executive, and the non-executive directors are sort of more advisory. They still work within the trust, but they work for them maybe a couple of days a, a month. I was going to say, um, and that they sort of um, oversee and offer assurance about what the trust is, is doing, just to make sure that that's, that that's clear. Yeah, the, the executive directors are all, all, all members of the staff, senior members of the hospital staff, and the non-executive are people, I think a couple of them work at the university, they work in different organisations, but they have skills that they can bring that are very, very useful. Some are financial, some are not financial, but they can bring these, some are in the building works, they can build, bring these skills to, to the board. And I would say through the, the, the pandemic, the non-executive directors have put over and above what they would normally do to ensure that senior staff and the executive directors who were trying to support the staff through the problem, they were also supporting them to make sure that they were getting any support that they they needed and they weren't forgotten about. As a member, how much of your time could would that take up, not as a governor, but just as a, as a member of the organisation? Well, as a member, it would take up as, as much or as little as you want it to, to give. 
uh, there's the AGM, which you can, uh, uh, the public are entitled to attend, the membership can attend. Um, Vanessa or Danielle may ring you and said, would you assist with the interview panels? But if you're working, you obviously can't do that. So, you know, you say what you can do uh, and what you can't do is fine.